This is Bobby Gillis with SojournMusic.com, once again in Neil Robbins' studio. Neil is the producer of our Isaac Watts project, which is coming out very <laughs> shortly. I can't talk when you do that. That's how Bobby talks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we talked last week a little bit about the uh, first of two Isaac Watts projects, and the code name for this would be High Wattage. This is a, a high it's energy. High yes. Uh, won't be the final name, I'm sure. Mike Cosper would want us to say. Mm. <laughs> Neil, what has been the biggest surprise during the recording process? The biggest surprise for me has been uh, the adaptation of the actual material. Like mm. Isaac Watts' uh, lyrics basically is what we're adapting to new songs that we're writing. Right. Because his songs are written for long and short meter, I was right. told, which is basically the same two songs that were passed around to churches. Sure. Um, so instead of recording the same song with different lyrics <laughs> over and over again, we wrote new melodies. And that part seemed to come very easy. It seemed like we have a lot of great writers with good sensibilities about that. Uh, the most difficult part is taking some of these uh, words that he would use in concepts he would get across and make them make sense today. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a singable way, there's some... Uh, I, I believe the lyrics should be easy to sing, and some of them were just not very easy to make sing. Right. Uh, it was hard to make them fit the melody and what on, so on and so forth. And anytime there was a change in a lyric, it seemed like it took us forever to come up with something. Right. Um, so the initial writing went very quickly because all the lyrics were there, but then when it came down to finishing that last 10%, so it sounded like a good song that works now and still holds true to the concept, that was the most difficult part of this recording. Sure. What are some of the things that you had to do? I mean, just, just busting out new lyrics, sitting in the studio, saying... Yeah, when we get here, we start to record a vocalist. This is, like, it happened almost every time, and mm -hmm. I'm like, that is just not working. There's A word is just too antiquated, or it's mm -hmm. too many syllables for the melody, and just right. weird little things that would hang up, or it just wasn't singing right. So we'd stop, and we'd pull out a pen, and uh, we'd pull out the, the original lyrics and look at it and try to flip it around and make it work right. Right. Was it a challenge that uh, we talked in the first interview that there were so many different people involved? Uh, I think you said seven guitarists and you know all right. kinds of, of drummers, and we get uh, I think eight vocalists uh, eventually that we'll be recording. Mm -hmm. Is it a challenge to get all of these people in and do their thing and have yeah, it come yeah. apart? You know, as as one album basically. Right. Well, it's, everybody's available at one time or another, but not everybody's available at the same time. Right. So it's been a little piecemeal. That's uh, it's a scheduling challenge. This is a volunteer project. Nobody's getting paid to come in and record. Um, so it's on their schedule of their leisure. And that part's been like kind of crazy, as you, mm -hmm. you can imagine, trying to coordinate that. Actually, having that many people come in and play on it and work on it has been great, though. Sure. Um, everybody's been, you know, bringing a lot of creativity to the project and. Uh, I, like when I'm producing, I always like to have an idea of what I want them to do in case they can't think of something. Um, so, but uh, in most of the cases, people have brought something very interesting, and uh, when we've been able to schedule them, <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> but it's slowed the project down a lot. I've just been right. I've been taking a lot of daytime off to write while I'm waiting for people. Let's pretend. <laughs> let's, let's play pretend. That's how my favorite sentence is always talking about me. <laughs> let's pretend that you are a uh, uh, maybe a, a Christian music review, reviewer. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and you were you were getting this project, um, and you know nothing about it. What are the kinds of things that you think that people are going to think? I think they'll be disturbed and excited at the same time. <laughs> I think that they're going to be excited that it doesn't sound like everything else that comes down the pipeline. There's really no marketing restriction put on the way this should sound. It's just right. people are doing what they love and making it sound the way they want. So it's not going to sound like a typical um, CCM recording. Uh, I think that's going to be exciting for some people. Other people, it's scary. They're not sure if it's safe. I think that the lyrics, in some sense, if you're not familiar with the writings of Isaac Watts, are going to scare the pants off some people because they're not going to know what the heck uh, right. they're talking about. They're, they're used to, like, I can sing of your love forever, and Isaac Watts is singing about, you know, uh, Judgment Day. Right. Or, you know, <laughs> Reformed Theology or something. It's, it's, it's a lot heavier, and it covers a... a an interesting uh, spectrum we don't normally get to cover. And, and in terms of music uh, as well, and, and let's compare it to some of the past Sojourn projects. A lot of people that don't don't go to Sojourn don't realize how eclectic we are. And, and you, you go to a church service, uh, you know, we go to the 930 and we worship together one week and it's kind of this uh, bluegrassy feel and we go another week and, and it's a lot more of a, a rocking kind of vibe. So... Um, this is different than anything we've done before, correct? Yeah, yeah. 
People yeah. are going to be... we got to collect people that some drink decaf, some drink Exactly. Water, some like the sweet tea, <laughs> some like it unsweetened. So we've got a little something for everybody in there. Yeah, it, there's... Uh, this record is more homeogenic than it, I guess it could be if we represented <laughs> everybody's taste. This right. is really we're going after something um, contemporary. I hate the word contemporary, but I, I feel like it's something that's pushing where music's going. Right. And it's uh, definitely got an edge to it. I feel like it's probably going to upset your grandparents if you play it for them. Uh-oh. Um, unless your grandparents are very young. And Which is possible. I mean, uh, all things we won't possible. get into all that. <laughs> young grandparents. <laughs> Bobby Gillis. All right, hi. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that was tangential. Go on. So the musical style of the project is just pretty edgy in the Yeah, there's some ways. feedback. There's some loud guitars. There's some distortion. There's yelling and um, hard hitting of drums. And yet many sensitive moments of delight. How close are we to being done? We are. If I was going to give you a score, it would be 11,024 out of 1,453. I don't understand that at all, but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We're gonna, we're <laughs> but we're close. we're close. We're close. <laughs> all righty. Well, Neil, thanks for, uh, thanks for allowing me into your studio, into uh, this this workplace. And, and <laughs> That's where we are. Right where I was. <laughs> we'll catch up with you later. Talking with you is such a delight, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>